And during the few moments that we have left, we want to have just an off-the-cuff chat between you and me, us. We want to talk right down to earth in a language that everybody here can easily understand. We all agree tonight, all of the speakers have agreed that America has a very serious problem. Not only does America have a very serious problem, but our people have a very serious problem. America's problem is us. We're her problem. The only reason she has a problem is she doesn't want us here. And every time you look at yourself, be you black, brown, red, or yellow, a so-called Negro, you, are, you represent a person who poses such a serious problem for America because you're not wanted. Once you face this as a fact, then you can start plotting a course that will make you appear intelligent instead of unintelligent. What you and I need to do is learn to forget our differences. When we come together, we don't come together as Baptists or Methodists. You don't catch hell because you're a Baptist, and you don't catch hell because you're a Methodist. <laughs> you, don't, you don't catch hell because you're a Methodist or a Baptist. You don't catch hell because you're a Democrat or a Republican. You don't catch hell because you're a Mason or an Elf. And you sure don't catch hell because you're an American, because if you was an American, you wouldn't catch no hell. You catch hell because you're a black man. You catch hell, all of us catch hell for the same reason. <laughs> so we are all black people, so-called Negroes, second-class citizens, ex-slaves. You are nothing but an ex-slave. You don't like to be told that. But what else are you? You are ex-slave. You didn't come here on the Mayflower. <laughs> you came here in a slave ship in chains, like a horse or a cow or a chicken. And you were brought here by the people who came here on the Mayflower. You were brought here by the so-called pilgrims or founding fathers. They were the ones who brought you here. We have a common enemy. We have this in common. We have a common oppressor, a common exploiter, and a common di discriminator. So once we all realize that we have a, this common enemy, then we unite on the basis of what we have in common. And what we have foremost in common is that enemy, the white man. He's an enemy to all of us. I know some of you all think that some of them are enemies. Time will tell. In Bandung, back in, I think, 1954, was the first unity meeting in centuries of black people. And once you study what happened at the Bandung Conference and the results of the Bandung Conference, it actually serves as a model for the same procedure you and I can use to get our problems solved. At Bandung, all the nations came together. They were dark nations from Africa and Asia. Some of them were Buddhists. Some of them were Muslim. Some of them were Christian. Some of them were Confucian, Confucianists. Some were atheists. Despite their religious differences, they came together. Some were communists, some were socialists, some were capitalists. Despite, despite their economic and political differences, they came together. All of them were black, brown, red, or yellow. The number one thing that was not allowed to attend the Van Dunk Conference was the white man. He couldn't come. Once they excluded the white man, they found that they could get together. Once they kept him out, everybody else fell right in and fell in line. This is the thing that you and I have to understand. And these people who came together didn't have nuclear weapons. They didn't have jet planes. They didn't have all of the heavy armaments that the white man has. But they had unity. They were able to submerge their little petty differences and agree on one thing, that though one African came from Kenya, and was being colonized by the Englishman, and another African came from the Congo and was being colonized by the Belgian, and another African came from Guinea and was being colonized by the French, and another came from Angola and was being colonized by the Portuguese. When they came to the Bandung Conference, they looked at the Portuguese, and at the Frenchmen, and at the Englishmen, and at the, the other, Dutchman 
and, and learn or realize that the one thing that all of them had in common, they were all from Europe. They were all from, from they were all Europeans, blonde, blue-eyed, and white-skinned. They begin to recognize who their enemy was. The same man that was colonizing our people in Kenya was colonizing our people in the Congo. The same one in the Congo was colonizing our people in South Africa and in Southern Rhodesia and in Burma and in India and in Afghanistan and in Pakistan. They realized all over the world where a dark man was being oppressed, he was being oppressed by the white man. Where the dark man was being exploited, he was being exploited by the white man. So they got together under this basis that they had a common enemy. And when you and I here in Detroit and in Michigan and in America, who have been awakened today, look around us, we too realize here in America, we all have a common enemy. Whether he's in Georgia or Michigan, whether he's in California or New York, he's the same man. Blue eyes and blonde hair and pale skin. Same man. to do is what they did. They agreed to stop quarreling among themselves. Any little spat that they had, they settled it among themselves. Go into a huddle. Don't let the enemy know that you got a disagreement. Instead of us airing our differences in public, we have to realize we're all the same family. And when you have a family squabble, you don't get out on the sidewalk. If you do, everybody calls you uncouth unrefined, uncivilized, savage. If you don't make it at home, you take, you settle it at home. You get in the closet, argue it out behind closed doors. And then when you come out on the street, you pose a common front, a united front. And this is what we need to do in the community and in the city and in the state. We need to stop airing our differences in front of the white man. Put the white man out of our meeting, number one and then sit down and talk shop with each other. Go ahead, Dr. Bush. 